Welcome into Jambar TV. I'm Monica Kurgen. And I'm Abigail Cloutier. YSU offers more COVID testing. And Smart 2 gets greenlit for Phase 2. This is your student news. With Kelsey Norris, Monica Kurgen, Gabrielle backwards. Owens, Abigail Cloutier, Thomas Kushner, and Ben Lulai. This is Jambar TV. This semester, YSU partnered with CVS to offer preventative COVID-19 testing in Kilcally Center. Each week, the Office of Environmental and Occupational Health and Safety will randomly select 360 students, faculty, and staff to come in for a rapid test. Those selected will be notified in their YSU email on Fridays. Monday, YSU announced any student can get a free rapid test on Mondays and Tuesdays in Kilcally Center. Testing is not mandatory. To stay ahead of the curve, the office will begin testing sewage for the virus. So we look, you know, specifically at Kilcally, for example, um, pull a sample, and if we um, detected any of the SARS-CoV-2 virus, then we would follow up with specific target surveillance sampling in that building um, to identify um, who those people were. Um, the detection level in the wastewater is extremely low. It's a lot lower than um, like for a nasal swab. Um, so you'd be able to identify somebody who may be shedding the virus before they had any kind of symptoms or become contagious. Students and employees can make an appointment through the CVS website. Later on, Thomas Kushner will update us on YSU's latest COVID-19 data. Last week, the second phase of Youngstown's Smart 2 construction project was greenlit. It includes continued work on 5th Avenue as it connects to Park Avenue near campus, as well as Phelps Street and Federal Street downtown. The plan includes enhanced streetscaping, wider sidewalks, and better lighting. We're going to start to see, um, you know, we get a lot of pedestrian traffic going downtown. And as you fix up those streets and the sidewalks are better, it's going to make it safer. Um, just a newer sidewalk, well lit. Um, you're going to feel more comfortable. And I, I think that's, that's the uh, biggest benefit. Phase two will last three years and construction will end in 2023. YSU professor Corey Brozina received a $1 million grant from the National Science Foundation. It is the largest NSF grant YSU has ever received. Jambar reporter Gabrielle Owen sat down with the professor to discuss how the grant will be used. The National Science Foundation has awarded Professor Corey Brozina a $1 million grant, which makes it the largest grant that YSU has received from the National Science Foundation. This grant will be used to help commuter engineering students and more. Brazina said he feels great to be making history at YSU by receiving the NSF grant. It's going to hopefully in the long term change the landscape of, of YSU and what we can do here. We're going to really trying to make the engineering program a, a top notch program um, for uh, in the, in the entire state um, and in the, in the country as well. We, we have an opportunity to make this program better and the why and this grant is going to help us do that according to brazina the past nsf proposal has four main parts to help commuter engineering students which are the ysu dc scholarship which is a total of six hundred and twenty four thousand dollars that will provide 120 renewable scholarships throughout five years and will be distributed into two cohorts starting in fall 2021 the scholarship program will allow students to participate in enrichment activities, community building, mentoring, and more. And also, the program focuses efforts on women's outreach and recruitment due to low percentage of women working in the field of engineering. So it's, it's on average a $5,200 scholarship. So it's based on your financial need. If some students we see need a little bit more, we'll give a little bit more. If some need less, then we'll, we'll give them less. It's, it, it's, on, it's on average about $5,200 they'll get. And it's renewable um, every year for four years. Um, they'll have that funding. Because our goal with it is to get them here, 
get them situated, get them the support they need to be successful, and keep them uh, in the pathway to uh, be an engineer and, and to graduate. In order for students to apply for the YSU Deep Sea Scholarship, they must be Pell Grant eligible, a first-year incoming engineering student, have a 3.0 GPA while in high school, and submit a reference letter from a high school teacher. I'm Gabrielle Lawrence reporting for Jambar TV. Andrews Student Wellness and Recreation Center partnered with the American Canoe Association to hold pool kayak clinics for the spring semester. R.J. Markowitz, coordinator of Adventure Recreation, explains more about what these clinics are and what they teach students. But, but what we're trying to do here is fine tune everything. So make sure that you're using the correct muscles, you're using the correct stroke, um, and that, that you are able to, um, you know, do this correctly to have the most fun and, and to be safe. The other thing that we're doing with some of these clinics are doing uh, rescues. So if for some reason you fall out of your kayak, um, it's good to know how to rescue yourself, how to rescue others. Each session is limited to five participants. To see if spots are still available, you can go to the Rec Center's website. RHA, the Rec Center, and meditation instructor Carol Hunsick join forces to offer Monday meditation nights. The classes are hosted on an open Zoom meeting and are open to students and faculty. The hour-long sessions have three sections with different exercises led by instructor Hunsick. You won't be doing the same meditation as you did last week or the two weeks ago. You'll keep you'll get in, you'll get all these different types so that you'll find hopefully one that you're like, I love mindfulness meditation, or I love loving kindness, or I love the matra meditation. Yeah, well, there's a lot of lots of research done on on um, college students uh, about meditating. They they get more attention. Um, they they're able to you know pay more attention. They're actually able to be more aware, um, a less tired. Their depression goes down, anxiety goes down. So I'm hoping for all that for them. Sessions occur at 6 p.m. on various Monday nights throughout the semester. The Youngstown Neighborhood Development Corporation works to revitalize housing and small businesses in the area. Recently, they purchased a plaza on Glenwood Avenue. Two of the units were actually occupied about five years ago and then um, were vacated due to a fire that occurred in the building. And so um, we've been keeping our eye on the building throughout that time, but recently the owners of the building decided to list it for sale. And our general plan at this point is to renovate it uh, and bring it back to life with uh, some quality of life and neighborhood serving businesses, as well as maintaining the a restaurant unit. So there, there was one unit in the building that was a restaurant and there's still a kitchen in it. So uh, we'll get that all cleaned up and hopefully be able to attract another restaurant tour to that space. The YSU Honors College wants you to be your best self this spring semester. They're hosting multiple discussions and lecture series for students. Coordinators in the Honors College hope these sessions will help students learn from failure, develop healthy relationships, and self-care. We've just had a lot of, you know, conversation in honors and, you know, the pandemic has really made it even maybe more clear, you know, that how much our students struggle with, um, you know, with failure and, and how we want students to see failure as a learning opportunity. Um, but what better way, you know, to do that than by learning through other stories and hearing through others' experiences. Check out the first session called Friends, Family, Faculty, Navigating Relationships During COVID-19. It's on WebEx February 11th at 6 p.m. Visit the YSU News website for the link. Next, Thomas Kushner brings us YSU's latest coronavirus data from the newsroom. Have any phone call? Thanks, Monica. 
This week, Youngstown State University reported 33 new cases of COVID-19 for the week of January 23rd. This includes two university employees, one student who lives on campus, and the rest of the cases are attributed to students who live in off-campus housing or are commuter students. In the coming weeks, YSU plans to update its COVID-19 dashboard to include more testing information. This will include the number of participants in the weekly surveillance testing, as well as how many test positive. The information that is currently on the dashboard about positive tests will remain. Up next, Abigail Cloutier sits down with the president of the Financial Investment Fund to discuss the recent stark market anomalies. From the Jambar Newsroom, I'm Thomas Kushner. You're here to be part of something bigger, to make things happen. For you, college is about knowledge being shared, learning experiences that aren't limited to the classroom. On campus, you wanna matter. It's about engaging every day, building relationships with students, with mentors, with the community, in the heart of a reinvented city. We are that something bigger. We are Youngstown State University and proud. As a former quarterback here at Youngstown State, I understand what it takes to be the very best. By becoming a member of the Penguin Club, you can help provide the support necessary for all YSU student athletes to be their very best. You'll receive great benefits like priority season tickets, game day parking, and access to hospitality rooms. To join the Penguin Club, call 330-941-1YSU or go to ysusports.com. The environment in the hospital can be very intense for a patient. Being able to put a smile on their face brightens up my day. I go to Youngstown State University and my passion is nursing. What I love about studying nursing is that it takes you out of the classroom and into the lab. It's really hands-on. The professors here push you to be your absolute best, so if you want it, you gotta work hard for it. I am so excited about my future. I'm Shantiana and I am why I'm proud. Exercise. Wait, what? What's going on right now? Yeah, man. Exercise. I don't know. I don't know if I should even be talking to you right now. It's got lots of benefits. Mm. Okay. The benefits of exercise include increased levels of energy, higher quality of sleep, better muscle and bone strength, improved memory, and clearer skin. Welcome back to Jambar TV. My name is Abigail Cloutier, and I'm here with Jeffrey Senadak, a senior finance major and the president of the Student Investment Fund. So, Jeffrey, give me a little bit about your background um, as the president and your knowledge of investing. Yeah, thank you for having me here. I really appreciate the opportunity to uh, speak with you today. Uh, my, my background in investing would be my involvement with the Student Investment Fund. Uh, we were started in 2008, and we've continued since in the, in the business college, and so my, my bit of investing and knowledge would be, be through that. And, um, you know, we really, we really look to be investors, not speculators. And we'll, we'll get to this later when we talk about some of the recent developments. But, you know, we're looking to invest in companies long term. And we're looking at financial statements, company background, you know, kind of how the economy is doing. Um, so whereas I wouldn't say, you know, I'm a, a professional trader or anything, but learning from the, the topics we talk about in class and being involved with the Student Investment Fund has been a, a really great opportunity where I've moved from a member to the president over the years. Um, we do stock pitches. It's completely student-led. Uh, we make all of the decisions, although we do have an advisor who, who is a, you know, he has a CFA, a CFP, he's a, he's a financial-oriented guy. We ultimately make all the decisions, so it's really been a great experience over the years to be involved with that. Absolutely, and obviously your background in long-term investment is a little different um, or a lot different than what's been going on yeah. recently with the stock market, but why has what happened recently been such an anomaly and been making headlines? Yeah, so it's, it's been an anomaly because of how fast certain stocks, GameStop being one, GameStop being one of them, and there's, there's certain other ones, how fast they've increased in, in their price. Um, we've also seen kind of how over recent years how you know social media and the ability to kind of share ideas rather than like 
just listening to someone on TV or reading something in the newspaper, how a lot of people who are like-minded are be being able to pool their money together and invest in certain things. And so, you know, GameStop is the big name What really happened there. Were, um, there were a couple of hedge funds, uh, which are, are entities that, that pool a lot of big money together. And, and they're looking to generate big returns. Well, they were short selling GameStop. So they, they felt that the price was going to go down. The business wasn't a, a good business to invest in. And certain uh, retail investors, people like you and me, were getting together on stream, uh, platforms like Reddit or certain other things like that. And they, they said, we, we want to stick it to the big guys. We want to put our money in there and shoot up the price. So when the price increases and you're hoping that it decreases, uh, you end up losing a lot of money as the hedge funds have. So I think it's something that could continue where people are gathering up on social media and, and putting, putting their money in certain things. And with apps to the tr uh, trend towards the general investor like Robinhood, mm -hmm. Webull, I think you can even buy stocks on Cash App now. Mm -hmm. How could this be a growing trend in the future? Or is this something that we could see more often? Yeah, definitely. Um, I, I really like the fact uh, that the trend in the industry has been allowing you know, individual people like us to have more access to investing. You don't have to go through your financial advisor. You don't have to have $250,000 to get started with investing. It's people like you and me that are able to get involved and, and start saving for retirement, saving for goals. Um, so it's, it's really great that it's been accessible like that. But we've seen with that access, with people being at home due to the pandemic and having less things to do, they've kind of almost turned it into a gambling thing. And that's not necessarily good if you're investing for the, the long term. Um, but it's an interesting term that we'll have to, we'll have to follow. And with people who um, have an average income or average investors, um, obviously their money means a little more to them. Mm -hmm. So what are the risks for a person like you and me who might want to get involved um, in investing and trading? Yeah, I mean, there's, there's a lot of risks, right? If you're investing in stocks, you can lose the whole amount you put in there, right? So, you know, myself personally, the Student Investment Fund, we're, we're looking to invest in the long term, right? We have, on, on a personal personal note, I mean, I'm young, I'm looking to invest to save up money for retirement ultimately, right? So when you have a long time horizon like that, you can you want to pick companies, mutual funds, ETFs, things like that, that you're going to stay in for 20, 30, 40 years, and your money will grow. I mean, there's a lot of stats out there, but if you're investing in the market for over 10 years or so, like not just an individual stock, but in an ETF, something that just tracks the market, you, you can't lose money over, over a 10-year period. It, it goes up, and that's, that's the natural trend of the market. So the risks, I would say, is, yeah, yeah getting caught up in like the speculation, like only focusing on the price. Oh, great, GameStop went from $3 in August to $480 last week. Oh, I want a piece of that. I want to make money off of that. And people did. Uh, people might still make money off of it, but... You know, at the same time, if you were in that frenzy and you bought in at 480 and it's down to $50 today, you just lost a lot of money because you were speculating. You were just looking at the price. Um, whereas myself, the Student Investment Fund, we're looking to invest in, in companies with good fundamentals, good financial statements, right? They're generating a lot of money. They're returning that money to shareholders. Um, they have a good business plan, good all of that stuff. So you have to look at those things when you're investing for sure. And so if somebody wants to kind of avoid the speculation and get involved in investing, even though you can't offer financial advice, what yeah. are some general tips <laughs> that people could take to or keep in mind when they want to start investing? Yeah, so first and foremost, if you, if you don't have a lot of money to invest, you're going to want to di diversify your money and not just put it all in GameStop or just all in Apple, right? And so you can do that through mutual funds or ETFs, which just track the market. You can pick one that just tracks like the S&P 500. That's an excellent way to start out if you don't have a lot of money. You're diversifying your risk. Uh, one company isn't going to make or break you. Um, uh, and uh, what was the question at the second part of it? You said what are some of the actions you could take? Yeah, then, so just general tips or like general actions people yeah. can get involved and with. So if you're, if you're confident, you feel like you know enough to invest in a company, read up about them. Read their financial reports. Go on sites like the Wall Street Journal and CNBC and, and read more about them to see what the, the outlook is looking like. But overall, diversify your risk. Go into things that are like ETFs, mutual funds. Great. Thank you so much for coming in. We appreciate having you. Next, Douglas Campbell is going to give us our arts and entertainment news. You're looking to your future. 
preparing for your goals, and they're closer than you think. Because here, success is part of the plan. It's a place where academic and social opportunities are meant to prepare you for life, not just the next four years. You'll be equipped to face new challenges and turn hard work into a career. You're ready for your success to take root. And here's where it starts. We are Youngstown State University and proud. You're not waiting to see what the world has in store for you. It's more about what you have in store for the world. All you need is the opportunity. All you need are the resources of a large university and the advantages of a personalized academic setting where you can experience new worlds in the arts and sciences, business and education and make them your own. We are where you shape your future. We are Youngstown State University and proud. Growing up, I love figuring out how things work, putting things together. I love being able to come up with an idea, design it, just the whole process of creating things. I go to school here at Youngstown State and my passion is 3D design. I chose YSU because all the equipment, the research being done here, it's like a playground for me. I'm Alex and I'm Y and Proud. As a former quarterback here at Youngstown State, I understand what it takes to be the very best. By becoming a member of the Penguin Club, you can help provide the support necessary for all YSU student athletes to be their very best. You'll receive great benefits like priority season tickets, game day parking, and access to hospitality rooms. To join the Penguin Club, call 330-941-1YSU or go to YSUsports.com. Welcome back to Jambar TV. I'm Douglas Campbell. A picture is worth a thousand words, or for the people of Mahoning County, $50. In January, the Mahoning County Convention and Visitors Bureau opened the 2021 Snapshots of Youngstown competition. And with the pandemic, you know, we were just trying to adapt to the changes, trying to think of things that, you know, would be something fun to encourage people to get out. Every week, the Bureau will select two winners at random from January 19th through February 28th. The winners will receive a $50 gift card to a local Youngstown restaurant. College students are used to are used to writing research papers, lab reports, and other assignments. Some may be lucky enough to publish their research, but senior journalism major Sierra Kish fulfilled her lifelong dream of publishing a collection of poetry titled A Bird's Nest last summer. So I actually have my book, it's in four sections, like chapters, if you would say. Um, the first one is like a like a base of what I'm writing. The second one was like the sadder ones, but they're not like really sad, but they're like the sadder ones, me like breaking myself and everything. And the third one was like me finding myself again. And then the fourth one was like realizing I'm so happy. She plans on publishing another poetry collection and a children's book in the near future. After the break, Kyle Wills and Ben Lulai give us the latest on YSU basketball and bowling. You're here to be part of something bigger, to make things happen. For you, college is about knowledge being shared and learning experiences that aren't limited to the classroom. On campus, you want to matter. It's about engaging every day, building relationships with students, with mentors, with the community in the heart of a reinvented city. We are that something bigger. We are Youngstown State University and proud. Growing up, I love figuring out how things work, putting things together. I love being able to come up with an idea, design it, just the whole process of creating things. I go to school here at Youngstown State and my passion is 3D design. I chose YSU because all the equipment, the research being done here, it's like a playground for me. I'm Alex and I'm Y and Proud. The communication department is much more than media or delivering a speech. The YSU communication department offers programs in telecommunication, journalism, and communication studies. We inspire creativity, 
We encourage each student's passion. We explore new and advanced technologies that connect the human race. The communication programs at YSU ensure that every student is prepared and experienced for the outside workforce for life after YSU. Join the Jam Bar and find your voice when you tell the next big story. Become a host of Rookery Radio and gain hands-on experience. Or get involved with TV productions like Light the Wick, Penguin Rundown, and Jam Bar TV. YSU's communication department is much more than a department, an education, or a degree. It's a home for passionate individuals, for students to find and pursue what they love. Welcome back to Jambar TV. I'm Kyle Wells alongside Ben Lulai for this week's sports update. YSU men's and women's basketball were both in action this weekend. The women split the weekend against Robert Morris, losing 61 to 46 Friday and winning 71 to 64 Saturday. The men were swept by Detroit Mercy 78 to 75 Friday and 72 to 77 Saturday. Sports are a win mentality, right? What have you done for me now? You know, and um, I don't know, you know, everybody really truly understands the, you know, what this team has been up against. Um, but in the end, if you stay together and you stay the course, um, it, the reality of it's coming down to a, a three game tournament or a four game tournament. So a lot of basketball to be played um, and we just got to stay the course. This weekend, the men will travel to Robert Morris, and the women will play Purdue-Fort Wayne at the Beagley Center. Wise women's basketball team has won six of their last seven games. Fifth-year senior Mary Dunn is looking to build on the team's recent success. We sat down with Dunn to talk about balancing life on and off the court. School has always been, like, my number one priority. Even in my undergrad, like, I was super, like, devoted to school, so I think it's just like even more elevated now because grad school is definitely a lot more difficult than I had even ex expected it to be. So I think just always focusing on making sure that school is first and um, just really time management. She led the women to a seven point win on Saturday with 25 points and 11 rebounds. The women's basketball team begins a two game homestand against Purdue Fort Wayne later today and Saturday. The Youngstown State Bowling Team picked up a fifth place finish this past weekend at the PVAMU Invitational behind a runner-up performance from sophomore Megan Grams. Grams bowled the two best games of her career on Saturday with a 248 against Texas Southern in Game 1 and a 258 against Arkansas State in Game 5. The 258 is tied for the third highest game in program history and she averaged a 215 to play second. I had a feeling she was going to perform well this weekend. And she obviously got some confidence flowing Friday and, and Saturday. Yeah, finishing second overall in a very talented field. It was pretty impressive to watch uh, her play. So very happy for her. She's put in a lot of work the last year and a half, two years on her game, and uh, has really bought in, you know, to to the culture and added to our culture. Thanks on state football. Hasn't started for a few weeks, but luckily Super Bowl 55 is coming up. Although there are four, no former Penguins playing on Sunday, Young Sun State alumni are no strangers to the big game. This week's Sports Time Machine explores the Penguins' long history in the Super Bowl. Nine former Penguins have graced the gridiron on Super Bowl Sunday. In their 11 total appearances, YSU alumni have captured the Lombardi Trophy seven times, including two-time champion Cliff Stout. Other notable Penguins who have played in the Super Bowl include Ron Jaworski, who led the Philadelphia Eagles to its first Super Bowl appearance, and Jeff Wilkins, who won Super Bowl 34 with the St. Louis Rams. The last time Youngstown State was represented at the Super Bowl was by a pair of Penguins. Damon Patterson and Derek Rivers stood up for the New England Patriots at Super Bowl 53. To read more about this story and others from the show, pick up this week's Jam Bar. Thank you for tuning in to Jam Bar TV. And Kyle, I have to ask, who do you think is going to win the Super Bowl this Sunday? You know, as, as, as well as the Chiefs have performed, you have to go with the underdogs, the Buccaneers. You know, Tom Brady, the GOAT, you have to go with them this weekend. Mm -hmm. First home, uh, first home Super Bowl. So thanks for tuning to Jam Bar TV. Until next week, stay safe, Penguins.
support for Jambar TV is provided in part by the YSU Foundation and the Jane F. Lamb Charitable Foundation. Thank you.